Good to see you, Rich. Good to see you, Barb. Hi, everyone. I'm Barb Stillmer with Blitz Business Success. And I'm Rich Croft from RG Performance Development. And we are going to have a short series of um, having how to have the best year ever. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great concept. We love to, to do this. And I think we've got great points coming up today. So, you know, the first one is what's holding you back? We've got a couple points on that. So let's get right into it and get some meat and potatoes going. How's that? Sounds good. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the thing that everybody brings to the table. And it's the technical aspect of my business. You know, so what is it I do uh, for my clients, my customers? And what is it that I need to improve on so that I'm technically better? So whether you're in the trades or whether you're in uh, business, um, we all have a technical skill. And that's something that'll show up. Yes. And uh, one of the things that uh, is a real issue with the, the technical part of what we do is that we want to do everything. So we try to learn everything. And, and there's a lot of places you can go to, to get support in, in learning about being in business and, and the things that you do yourself. But there's a lot of things that you probably shouldn't be doing on your own. Oh, that's so true. One thing that I find that people don't really get the concept of is that when you're actually the sole owner of the business, you are the person that wears all the different hats and such, the technical aspect becomes extremely critical for you to actually master so that you can get forward in your business. And sometimes there's things in business that we just aren't really gifted at. Yeah, to be recognized as being very good at your business, you do have to be able to focus on the things that you are very good at in your business. Um, recently, I got a message saying that I am so thankful for the people that are helping me in my business because they're experts at what they do and they take away that part of the business and do it really well. And I get to focus on the things that I do really well in my business. Awesome. So you bring up a great point. Yeah. When you're really gifted at something, you need to stay with what you're good at. And we have a thing called outsourcing mm -hmm. that is bringing in other people that are gifted at what they're doing and they can do what you don't want to do or nor should you be trying to do. Yes, yeah. Well, one thing that I love to teach when I'm um, out at companies or with other uh, business owners is, is the this is, um, exercise where you build your organizational chart for your company. And even if you're a company of one, when you start with I'm the president and I'm the VP and I'm the head of marketing and the head of sales and I'm a salesperson and you go through it, the first time I did this for my own company, for my first company, I had between 30 and 40 positions. <laughs> and I filled them all except two. My bookkeeper had one and my editor had one position. Mm -hmm. And so when you recognize how many positions you take up in your company and how much you actually have to learn to be able to manage a company really well, um, it can be very overwhelming if you start thinking of that way. Yeah. Even worse than that, if you start spending time trying to dedicate yourself to learn things that you're really not strong in and they're not your natural way of doing things and you're kind of going against the grain, you're going to find it difficult. You're not going to want to spend the time there. It's going to be a struggle. You're going to say things like, I know, say things like, I know what I'm supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. but I don't want to get it done or I can't get it done. Yeah. You know, it's not hard to pick up a phone and make a phone call, but sometimes that phone weighs 10,000 pounds mm -hmm. or sometimes it's the bookkeeping or the, you know, paperwork that we fight with. Mm -hmm. But regardless, we all have something yeah. that we really, really need to look at outsourcing as a, strict, a critical strategy. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of things that come around outsourcing. A lot of times it's about money. But if you're not doing things that are making money for your company and you're trying to learn all the other things that don't make money for your company, then you're actually losing money on your company. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. The good part about that is when you do outsource, you're likely to pick in somebody that's going to do it twice as fast and they're going to do it for probably a lot less than what it would cost you overall. And when you really think about when you're in your sweet spot and when you're in your strength mm -hmm. and you start working forward, um, you're probably making a lot more dollars per hour mm -hmm. than what you're actually paying out for. Yeah. So it's it's really wise to actually take a look at those jobs that are really not you know energizing you, that are really not the things that you should be spending your time on. Do more of what really generates your business and take a step off. I agree. I agree. Excellent. So that's step one. So our, our next point on uh, finding out what holds you back is about your mindset. Excellent thought. I love the mindset. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to mindset, if a couple of things come to mind for me, and I spend a lot of my time working with mindset. It's part of my leadership training. It's part of the things that I do with my clients. Um, what I know is, number one, is that where your mind is, whatever you believe to be true about your future success, whatever you've learned over all those years getting up to the place where you're at today, whether you've had success in one area or another, your mindset dictates exactly where you're going to stop working, mm -hmm. and then after that, you're going to start sabotaging and your business is going to go down. It's almost predictable to a point where if I ask enough questions, I can tell you how much you're going to earn in your industry mm -hmm. before you start to 
go down again. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's true. Our, our mindsets are often things that we bring from our childhood, the way that we were brought up. Uh, T. Harbecker talks about the money blueprint as being part of your mindset. And um, uh, oftentimes we're brought up to believe that uh, money or rich people are evil or, or they don't do good things. And, and the, most philanthropists are people who are well off, so they, they actually have the money so that they can give. So changing the mindset around, that's just one mindset, but changing our mindsets around what we can achieve and what is okay to achieve and how fast we can do it um, can really make a difference in how we get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple of good tools that I actually uh, get people to be aware of from a mind perspective mm -hmm. is the have to, should have to's. Anytime you say I must, I have to, I can't, I shouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, when I, I said to a client today, you know, if you're shooting on yourself all the time, <laughs> right? But what it does is it gives you a clear indication that you've got limitations. Yeah. Those kinds of comments um, typically will slow you down, rock your boat, and get you distracted from where you really want to go. So success for you then can become very difficult, even though the person next to you that's doing the exact same business down the street mm -hmm. is having great success, and you know they all seem to have uh, comparable education, yeah. experience, and technical skill. So your mindset dictates your altitude. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So with that said, you know, you've got your third and most, what I would call important in my uh, game yeah. Not that I would like to pick one or the other or you say uh, one thing to another, but our third one is implementation. Mm -hmm. And it's got a sweet spot for me because what I believe about implementation is the one area that we all overlook. That's true, because we think that, you know, as soon as we know technically how to do things in, and we just start working at it, we don't actually think about how we're going to get it done. Right. Yes, mm -hmm. and that's even bigger than we may think. Um, so it's not about um, you know this and that, or I should I should just you know mm -hmm. kind of put my effort into it. I put more time into it. Mm -hmm. Really, what it's about is, and I hear this all the time, and I'm sure you do too. And it's this comment of, I know what I'm supposed to be doing, but I just can't get it done, or or I don't have the time. And that that's part of the mindset too. You're kind yeah. of going back to the mindset. So instead of saying I, I don't have the time or I don't have the money, it's how can I find the time? Yeah. And right, how can I find the money or how can I make this work? So when you start saying how instead of the other, that looks at our mindset, but it also helps with the implementation. Right. And you said time too, because we've all, you know, talked about time management. Yes. Yeah. It's like the crazy word. It's like Cheerios in our, in our business toolkit. Yeah. Um, and, and the thing about time management that's so unique is you can't, cannot in any way, shape or form manage time. I mean, time just carries on. It's how you manage yourself. That's yeah. Yeah. So, and then the question becomes, well, we time walk, we do this and we mm -hmm. do that, but we don't take it to the next step, which really understanding about who we are. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things that I look for, and you may have a couple that you want to mm -hmm. chuck in here, but I look for uh, simple things like personality, mm -hmm. because we don't always uh, do things the same way when we're in a different personality. Uh, so one person versus the other, different, same background, they're going to handle it differently. Two is there's an energy level that we all have, mm -hmm. and um, there's a number of different categories in that, those energy levels so that... Uh, individuals, you, know, you could be the person that's high energy this way and another person would be high energy the other way. You mm -hmm. both can get it done, but it'll be in different ways. Mm -hmm. So with those, you know, just those two alone, you've got kind of some things to think about because now you've got a combination. And then there's this whole thing about skill set. You know, what's my skill set? Mm -hmm. And you put that together with a few other good things and you've got a combination lock yeah. that really works. And, and for me, that's why it's so hard when you go and listen to a seminar and you got this wonderful person who's telling you all about how he got it done, mm -hmm. which is awesome. But the only problem is, unless you have the exact combination when it comes to implementation, it's not not wow. necessarily going to work for you. It's going to be hard. Yeah. And when you start thinking about the differences in the personality and the energy, um, a really good example of that is that um, I have an introverted energy, so I re I require the opportunity to withdraw from crowds mm -hmm. to be able to rejuvenate, and that happens about f between four and six in the afternoon. I can do networking all morning long so this is where I set when I do my time management knowing my personality style and I'm almost an extrovert in the morning right. I do phenomenally well all, all day long and by about four or five o'clock in the afternoon I probably shouldn't be going to the chamber after five or something like that because that's the time of day when I'm not really at my best for networking but I can do a lot of other things at that time of day right. so when you're setting up I mean we went back to the time management which mm -hmm. really is managing time but managing your 
time and the, what you're going to do for your day. When you look at how you manage or how you feel during the day, how, when you best interact with people, when you best are capable of sitting down to actually mentally go through some of the work that you have to do, right. and when you can make those phone calls. I mean, should you be making phone calls first thing in the morning? Some people shouldn't be talking to anyone first thing in the morning. <laughs> without coffee. Without coffee. Without any, yeah, there, there's a few that I would don't even want to spend time with in the morning, but you know, there's. Uh, you know, later in the evening, it's time when they're actually um, perfectly online and being, um, you know, more, more productive. So, exactly. just finding out where you fit into that, and your implementation will go much faster if you know yourself that. So, take the time, you know, with these three different concepts, and kind of grab a hold of who you are and have a kind of a self evaluation, see where you're at. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, I hope you found something of interest in today's talk about finding out what holds you back. And uh, if you have some comments for us, we'd really appreciate it. Definitely. So put your comments down. If you've got questions, pop those down too. Uh, anything that you can come up with as, you know, things that really stick out for you about what we've said, whether it's true or whether it's wrong, love to see it in the blog. Yeah. And if you have anything about what's held you back in the past and maybe what you did to overcome it um, to help other people, that would be great too. So you can add it to the comments below. And we look forward to answering your comments. Until then, have yourself a great week. Thanks.